According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, demand for assisted reproductive technology, otherwise known as ART, has doubled in the past decade. ART includes all fertility treatments in which either eggs or embryos are handled. Hi, I'm Dr. Irene Dimitriadis, a reproductive endocrinology and infertility specialist at Massachusetts General Hospital and director of third-party reproduction at Mass General Fertility Center. Infertility, the inability to conceive or carry a pregnancy, can have many causes. Cryopreservation is a technology that allows a patient to freeze their eggs or embryos. I like to think of it like the ability to freeze time for our fertility. Cryopreservation may be a good option for people about to undergo treatments that may impact their fertility, including chemotherapy or surgery, people living with genetic or medical conditions that may lead to a decline in their egg quality or quantity, also known as ovarian reserve. These conditions may include autoimmune disorders or a family history of early menopause. People concerned about the impact of natural aging on their eggs and their fertility. In 1984, the world welcomed the first baby born from a frozen embryo. And in 1986, a woman in Australia was the first person to have a baby with frozen eggs. Earlier methods of cryopreservation involved slowly lowering the temperature over the course of an hour. This was risky since eggs in particular are mostly water and ice crystals could form damaging the eggs. We've made so many advancements in egg cryopreservation. In 2012, the American Society of Reproductive Medicine announced that egg cryopreservation was no longer considered an experimental procedure. So how does cryopreservation work? The journey begins with the patient taking medications that stimulate the ovaries so that we can retrieve as many eggs as possible. The process during which a doctor removes eggs from the patient's ovaries is commonly referred to as an egg retrieval. After we retrieve eggs, you have two options. Option one is to just freeze the eggs. This gives you the option to fertilize with a sperm source of your choice in the future. This is a good option if you don't have a male partner or don't want to use a sperm donor at this time. Option two is to fertilize the eggs with a sperm source of your choice, creating an embryo and freezing it. This allows the option to attempt pregnancy with a frozen embryo at a later time. For the freezing process, we use a technique called vitrification, which involves flash freezing to sub-zero temperatures about minus 196 degrees Celsius and storing in liquid nitrogen. This eliminates the possibility of damage from ice crystals. At Mass General Brigham, we have a highly specialized team of physicians and embryologists involved in cutting edge research to improve outcomes in cryopreservation. Some of our research highlights include the technique of ultra-fast embryo thawing, studying the ideal time for thawing an embryo, use of artificial intelligence in different aspects of the freezing and thawing process. For example, quality assurance that allows us to monitor performance of the staff performing the freezing and thawing procedures, improving the witnessing process to track which embryos are being frozen, thawed, and transferred, improving the process of grading embryos by assisting the embryologist and removing the subjectivity of this process. While success rates depend on the unique factors of each case, Studies have found that the chance of having a healthy baby is the same whether you use a frozen egg or a fresh egg. Our team is dedicated to helping you achieve your family building goals in a way most comfortable to you. It is our privilege to support you throughout the entire fertility journey, be it the physical or the emotional aspect of this process. Thanks for watching. I'm Dr. Irene Dimitriadis. For more infertility videos, click here and don't forget to subscribe here.